the start of another beautiful morning here in Helsinki, Finland. I don't know what we're going to get up to yet today. We actually don't have a plan yet, but there will be something, you can rest assured. Right, Peter? That's right. Well, all the museums here are open a little bit late, so we're on our way towards one, but we don't really know what we're going to do once we get in that area. We're going to hopefully stop at a cafe, but this place seems to have a lot less uh, food just available like restaurants, especially Finnish food. I notice a lot of foreign foods, mm. but we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right, I think this is gonna be the place where we might be able to find food. Maybe. They have a little bakery type, like almost like a little Starbucks type thing, a cafe. All right, this is what we're eating for breakfast. It's a small assortment of pastries. This one is mine. It's really nice. What do you think of it, Peter? Uh, let's try it. That's really good. Finland is good at pastries. Mm -hmm. Who would have known it? And here's a bite of my cake. This is the true test of whether or not Finland deserves sovereignty or not. <laughs> All right, it's passable. It's not exceptional, but it's all right, it'll do. Okay, my little one, it looks like a raspberry twisty thing. I guess I cut in the middle here. Okay. It's pretty good, but it's freezing cold. It's like it come out of the freezer. <laughs> it's good. No. We're down here on the boardwalk area and it's extremely beautiful. You can see there's a giant church down there. There's like a military boat over here. There's a Ferris wheel somewhere back there. I think the military ship's in the way. Yeah, it's so, it's really nice. This is a really beautiful city. It's very like, you know, tidy for a European city, especially. It's really good. It's, it's, a, it's a nice one. But like we said in the other one last night, you know, this is a place that hasn't really been touched so much by war as other places have all across Europe. So it's really got a uh, head start on its architectural like beauty, I should say. Modern transportation in Finland. They look like police. <laughs> One really nice thing about the Helsinki Harbor is there's a lot of tiny little islands just off the coast. And instead of just leaving them there as, you know, empty, barren nothings, they've got a lot of cool stuff that they just kind of scattered on them. So some have forts, some have churches, a lot have restaurants. Um, I've seen on the map their zoo. The local city zoo is actually on one of these islands. So they have a lot of cool stuff just like right off the coast, but it does mean you have to get on these ferries and kind of go over to these things. But this one right here that's just next to us has a beautiful church on it. it would be a nice view, but unfortunately we don't know how the boat ferry system works here. So we're gonna miss out on this, but we are going to something else. Peter's going for a swim. <laughs> I don't think I can put my weight on it. I'm no, watching. I don't know if it's picking up on camera very well, but I could see the entire surface of that thing wiggle and move <laughs> when he did that. Yeah. Lane, you're a bit lighter than me, so maybe you could try. I don't think I am. I'm taller, Peter. <laughs> Stronger. Yeah. All right, we're about to go into the Mannerheim Museum, the field marshal who served Finland and then was presidential dictator of, Poland, or of Finland after the Winter War and during the Second World War, or the Continuation War, as they call it here. So we're going to go learn about him because Peter doesn't know anything yet. All right, guys, we just went through the Mannheim house and it was really awesome. It, we learned a ton here, like a really incredible guy. He had an incredible life. Mm. Like it's I, I can't think of another historical figure who's been so impactful in the country that they're from. I, I would compare him to like Marquis. George Washington for the United States. I was going to say Marquis de Lafayette, very some, something, someone that's kind of 
been on both sides of history in so many different ways. So I think, yeah, George Washington, good, ex good example, or Marquis de Lafayette fought for fighting for so many different nations. It's very interesting that, and so many awards, this guy is like, he's got, he's got more awards than I don't know what he can wear. He couldn't even wear them all there, that heavy, I'd say. Yeah, one of the really <laughs> cool things is he had awards from both sides, both allies and uh, axes from World War One, World War Two. Uh, yeah, just cool guy. Obviously, he liked to hunt. Mm. I definitely recommend you come check this out when you're here in Finland. We couldn't do photography for most of it, but it's a really great museum. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're actually con like adding stuff right now. So mm. when you come, it'll probably be different than if you've come before. Yeah. So I highly recommend you come and check it out. Great. Yeah, it's an absolutely amazing museum. It's really cool. It's up here in the middle of all the uh, embassies, it looks like. So... You know, you might have reason to come up in this direction anyways. I, I definitely like that museum a lot. Uh, there is no photography allowed. So we were kind of uh, allowed to take a short video at the end out of the kindness of their hearts. But yeah, it was a great museum. I really, really liked that a lot. And Mannerheim is, like I said, just generally kind of an interesting guy. He was in charge of the country twice. He stepped down from power as regent after democratic elections in which he ran and even lost. So he is somebody who wasn't like crazy for power, which is very rare amongst leaders in the post imperial Russian uh, realm. There was a lot of people who went in and became dictators out of that and he didn't. So that's saying something. That's why I compared him to George Washington because he really did make a huge impact on his country in a way that most people never get to for their own. The city, for how compact it is, because it is kind of like on a peninsula almost, is it's got a lot of green spaces. It's got a lot of parks that you see on the map, you know, overlooking the bay. It's a pretty nice place. I can imagine in the uh, summer, it's probably very much more full. But even now, there's a lot of old men out walking through here. Nice town. I really like Helsinki a lot. Obviously, I haven't spent a lot of time in uh, Scandinavia in general, but of the one city I've been to in Scandinavia, it's my favorite. <laughs> Directly behind me is the monument to the victims of the Winter War. Basically the conflict where Russia came and took huge tracts of Finnish territory away from them. Huge parts of the Finnish population were actually displaced because of that. Obviously most of Finland's population is centered around the south of the country because it is more hospitable. And basically, an, an enormous tract of southeastern Finland in Karelia was taken away and uh, forced into the then Soviet Union after the Winter War. They fought hard, they fought for a while, but unfortunately in the end it was overwhelming numbers that won the day. But Finland was able to preserve its uh, national sovereignty in the end of it. So you gotta say something for the men who fought hard and did their best to stand against a country that was much larger. It's pretty interesting seeing these all over Helsinki now. We're just down the street from the Russian embassy and you see these saying, I'm Russian and I'm ashamed of my culture because of what they're doing right now in Ukraine, which is reasonable to be ashamed of. It is a very shameful act that the Russian state is committing against their neighbors. Well guys, we're at the Dutch embassy and it's pretty interesting. They wanted to, you know, really show some of their culture here. So they kind of represented the uh, Dutch, the Amsterdam red light district by putting their embassy in a red building with red marble. Isn't that right, Peter? It looks like it's what it seems. Yeah, have you spent any time in uh, the Netherlands or Amsterdam's red light district. I've never been to Holland, so yeah, never been there. Go ahead. There's a firework, a random firework on the ground there. It's not really lighting. Yeah. It's in ice, so it's understandable that it's not lighting well. Peter tried his best. It just wasn't good enough. Oh, something we forgot to mention because we were told inside the Mannerheim Museum, but it is pertinent to him, is today is actually the anniversary of his death. So once again, another weird coincidence on this trip. Spooky.
guess. Even in Finland, they've got Mexican food. The quality of which, unfortunately, will never be known because I'm too full to eat it, but there are Mexican restaurants here. The Finnish are actually the biggest consumers of coffee in the world per capita, little known fact. I didn't know. It's a family reunion here in Helsinki for Peter. You'll never get me lucky charms. <laughs> well, that's gonna be it from here in Helsinki. We went shopping, we bought some things. I hope you guys enjoyed our video walking around today. A lot of history, but we didn't get a video a whole lot. So I'm sure this one wasn't super long, but I hope you still enjoy. It's a nice city. What do you think? Absolutely, beautiful city. Pretty expensive, but that being said, like really worth a visit. For anyone thinking about going somewhere, it's probably really cheap to fly here around winter time as well. It's off season. So yeah, it's, it's very, very nice. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Goodbye.